I've explained you now what the LCP array is and why it seems like the right definition to augment the suffix array to get the same functionality as the suffix tree. What I haven't told you so far is how to compute the LCP array. As always, first think about the, the naive and simple way to do it. It's longest common prefixes, so you can always compute this by uh, step by step, each pair individually. But just looking at the two suffixes and comparing them left to right, how many characters match. But obviously that can be, um, that can go for a long while if they share a lot of suffix, if they share a long common prefix. So the overall time could be quadratic and that's uh, out of the question. That's way too slow for anything interesting. Um, but the, the key insight how to do it faster is, is this one. Uh, suppose we do see a very large LCP value and that's one that is costly. If all the LCP values are small, then um, the naive method would work fine. The, it only runs into problems if there are many long shared uh, prefixes. So suppose there is a costly LCP value. That means we can also find another one. And let me show that on this example. Uh, a valid example of an English sentence. You can actually add three more buffaloes. So it's buffalo, 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 buffalo. Uh, a nice coincidence that uh, buffalo is a noun and a verb at the same time. Uh, well, you can read about this, you can go up to seven buffaloes, but that's uh, not my point for today. It's just a nice example with a lot of repetition. If you look at the, the suffix array of this text, uh, I know I've shown the, the first few suffixes here. Um, then you see that they have a lot of things in common. For example, the, the second and third, or well, at position two and three, they share this long allo buffalo buffalo. Okay, um, if we chop off the first character of those two suffixes, we get another suffix, obviously. It's not so clear where in the sorted list it is, but it's clearly the suffix that starts one character later. So if we have the suffix array and the inverse suffix array, we can uh, find where they are. And uh, just by definition, if these two share this, uh, this uh, long common prefix, if I take off the first character on both, they still share the same common prefix, except for the first character that's gone. So if the LCP entry here was 19, I'm now sharing um, a prefix of length 18. And I don't have to spend a single comparison to know that. It's by definition, it has to be like that. Uh, there's only one issue here. It's, it's not so clear which LCP value that is and things get worse. It's not even clear if these two suffixes are adjacent in the sorted order, right? It's, you're taking a character away. So that mean, it might mean there's more suffixes um, between those. Uh, in general, that can happen. And if that happens, there is no LCP array entry where we would get the value of 18. So it seems like this is this is a good idea because it allows us to save effort. We can, if we once had to find this long common prefix, we would like to uh, exploit that fact for other values and amortize the cost. Uh, but it doesn't seem to work quite exactly by doing that. But there is a way to do it. And that's uh, Kasai et al's algorithm. Uh, so they found a very, very nice, simple algorithm to do this. And I want to illustrate it just on an example. Uh, the key idea is we don't compute the LCP values in the order of the array, starting with LCP of, zero, of 1, then LCP of 2, etc. That, that seems not easy to do efficiently. Instead, we compute the LCP values in text order. So we start with the longest suffix and then work our way through the string. I'll show you the example. And uh, we use the observation from, from the buffalo example. If we take, if you have a long shared prefix and we take the first character off, that shared prefix will not vanish. We don't know if, they're, if the resulting suffixes are still adjacent, but even if they're not, they might be further apart, but then there is another LCP value between those and that value must be at least as big 
as uh, the previous one minus one. I think this will become much clearer in the example, so let's just uh, get cracking with that. We start with the first suffix in the text order. That's the entire text. So we start with i equals zero. Uh, here's the entire text. Now, uh, the first thing we do is we find the corresponding LCP value. And for that, we have to move to the right. So we look into uh, the rank array and we find the same string at position six in the sorted list. Remember the LCP values, they sit between the uh, adjacent suffixes in the sorted order. So the LCP value for six is actually talking about this suffix and the one that precedes it in sorted order. And that happens to be ban in this case. And we, we know which suffix that is because we can go to rank six minus one and then use the uh, suffix array to know where the starting point for that suffix is. But the, uh, what we do in this example here, you, you just directly see this. So just uh, imagine you have written down the, the sorted list by uh, or explicitly. What we do now is find longest common prefix of these two suffixes. And we do that in the naive way. So we just uh, compare, we find this is it. They share this long, uh, this, um, common prefix of three characters. So the LCP entry for this is three. That was just the naive way to find this common prefix. Now we want to take that knowledge and uh, learn as much from it as possible for other LCP values. And remember, uh, the idea was to chop off the first character. So what we do is uh, if we chop off the first character, we know there's still this N that is uh, matched. And uh, Kasai's algorithm now says, okay, uh, you just go to the next suffix in text order that corresponds to chopping off one, uh, the first character. You find that char you find where that is in the sorted list using the rank array. So you go to the right and you find this is, this is the corresponding suffix that has the first character omitted. And there's one preceding it. Now, uh, notice that this one maps to this if you take off the first character. And this one maps to this if we take the first character off. So this is an example where the two are not adjacent in sorted order. There is something in between. But we can still make use of our knowledge about this common prefix because we know an must be shared. It was actually shared between all these, between this and this, but because they are in sorted order, it must be also shared by everything in between. Potentially more, like in this example, we can see here that we can extend this shared prefix by another character. That was not implied by the previous, um, the previous LCP value. We only knew that an doesn't have to be compared again. They have to be the same. We don't have to check them again, but we potentially have to extend that match. And that's what we did here. So we spent one extra comparison and found another LCP array entry of, of uh, three. Okay, that's how this algorithm works. Uh, let's see how it continues. What we've learned from this for the next example is there's a, a shared uh, common prefix of NA. We go to the next entry in, in text order, find where it is in the sorted order. We've learned from before that NA is shared, but we have to co compare the next characters. In this case, they don't match. So the LCP array is, the entry is two because they just share this, this inherited common prefix. We remember that there was one shared if we take the first character off. Now, if we find the next, the next suffix in text order in the sorted list, we know that they have this A in common because these are, well, again, um, this is, this one becomes this suffix if I take the first character off. The NAB ban actually becomes the A ban, so there's more they share, uh, but this definitely also has an A in the first position. That's what we know. Uh, there's another character that we can match. This we find by just naive comparisons. 
and uh, that's it. Then they then they differ. So the LCP entry at this position is a two. So you see how this goes. Uh, we compute the LCP values in text order, but what that means for the LCP array is that they were filled in some seemingly random order. The important point will be that we can uh, make use of previous comparisons to avoid uh, spending more on the next step. Uh, let's briefly finish this off. Um, the next in text order is, is this one. We find it here. We actually know that the n has uh, to match from previous, from the last entry, but then that's it. So we have an entry one in the LCP array. For the next one, we find it here. Uh, because the previous entry was only the first character, once we take that off, there's nothing left. So we know uh, nothing about those two. And if we compare them, we find that there is indeed nothing that they share. So the entry is zero. And uh, as the strings get shorter, this is a typical phenomenon. If we find this one here, they again share nothing. Um, and um, we, we again don't know any common prefix for the next round. Um, finding this one here, we find that it at least shares one uh, character at the beginning. That's by naive comparison. And uh, the last one is again a zero because uh, these don't share anything. And uh, notice that we never have to look at the last suffix because that's only the dollar sign. And we know the dollar sign is not shared with anything. And also it's the, the first entry in the list. So there wouldn't be anything that uh, precedes it to compare with. That's Kasai's algorithm by example. Here is the same thing written in code. Um, I probably don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, but just how, how does it work? L stores the current length of the uh, common prefix that we found. Initially, that's 0. Then we start with the first position in the text. We find, so uh, we start, uh, I want to do this in black. So we look at, that's not black. We now look at the suffix starting at position i. We find its rank in the sorted list that's moving from the left to the right. That's r. So what we will do is we compute the entry LCP of r. And uh, we'll note that this r can never be 0. That would mean we've reached the, uh, the end of the text, just the, the dollar. And uh, we stop here at n minus 1. We never let it reach the last because there's no LCP entry for that to compute anyways. Now this uh, i minus 1 may be a bit weird of a notation, but that just is the starting index of the suffix that precedes this thing on the right. So uh, if, if this would have been my r, then i minus 1 would be 0 because the suffix that precedes it in sorted order L of r minus 1 is 0. That's the starting index here for banana ban. Uh, that's exactly that. And then here we do the actual character comparisons. And notice that, so we, st we compare the suffix ti and the suffix ti minus 1. Uh, but we start comparing at the elf position of those suffixes because we already inherited a, sh a potentially a shared common prefix of length l. Initially, that's 0. But uh, when the algorithm keeps going, l can have a larger value in, in the time. That's, that was the, the green characters in my example. So as long as we find matching characters, we increment l. As soon as this terminates, l is the actual length of the shared um, prefix of these two. So we store that in the appropriate position. And then for preparing the next round, we subtract one from L, but we never go below zero. That is um, taking the first character off the shared prefix and then continue. So in code, this is really, really short and concise. Uh, to understand why this is correct, why this computes correctly the LCP arrays, I think the example is much more insightful. Um, but the code is useful to have to implement it and to analyze it. That's what we still have to do. 
Um, the overall running time is linear, as I as I sketched, but I want to uh, give you a very nice little intuitive argument why that is the case. Uh, what we'll count is the number of character comparisons as most of the time in the string chapter. And the key insight here is uh, these character comparisons, they only happen at this at this single position, right? So this is counting how often we have to iterate this inner loop. And the key insight is we have to separately count those that come out equal and those that come out unequal, then we can easily bound their total number. Whenever one of these is unequal, that means we leave the internal, the inner loop, and we only do that once for each iteration of the outer loop, right? For every i, we enter this loop, repeat that a couple of times, but then eventually we leave it when the characters are unequal. So we do that exactly as many times as the outer loop is, uh, is run. So it's at most n uh, comparisons from, from there. So these are, these are fine. These are linear in number. The equal comparisons are a little more concerning because uh, for each individual iteration, we could spend a long time running our circles in this inner loop. Uh, but uh, we can again do a, a potential style argument. Um, this L value always increases by one in the loop, but uh, it's only decremented n times in total because it's only decremented here and that's only run once per iteration, so only n times in total. And uh, we also know that L can never be uh, bigger than n, because that would be the entire length of the string. So you can only walk up with L a certain number of times, you can never walk down more than n times, and it stays below n. That works out to at most uh, two n increments um, in in the in the worst case. So uh, both operations are overall limited by uh, a constant times n. So Kasai's algorithm runs in linear time, uh, even though it's based on the naive version of just comparing uh, the characters uh, from left to right, but by exploiting the fact that um, a long shared prefix of, of two suffixes implies another shared uh, prefix of two other suffixes, uh, we can get the overall running time to linear. Okay. With that, we can um, go back to suffix trees. So we found a way to construct suffix arrays. We found a way to construct LCP arrays. And these two things actually encode all the information in the suffix tree. That's what I've shown in this picture before. So a way to get a reasonable practical algorithm for suffix trees is to compute the suffix array, compute the LCP array, and then construct the tree from those two. You will actually look at this um, construction on an example in the tutorials, so I don't want to uh, talk about this in detail in class. Um, but uh, once you have these two things uh, and uh, observe this connection, it's actually not too hard uh, to really construct the suffix tree if you want it. And that is finally looking into this magic box. Remember initially before Easter when we started this, this uh, text in the indexing chapter, I told you there is this magic data structure, the suffix tree, famous people conjectured uh, that it doesn't exist because it, it solved problems that they thought are not solvable in linear time. And yet it does exist and it's constructible in linear time, but it's complicated and I don't tell you how yet. But here you actually learned how, you actually, uh, you've actually seen um, how to do this um, in most of the details. And uh, I think that's a, that's a good, a good starting, a stopping point for this uh, unit. Concluding this, this uh, section and, and actually the entire unit a little earlier than I thought, um, the enhanced suffix array 
that usually means the suffix array plus x, where x is the LCP array, sometimes plus additional things. Again, I'll refer you to the tutorials for one example, what this other x could be. But uh, usually based on the suffix array and the LCP array, you get a simple data structure that's, um, that's easy to handle in code, and that can support um, the same algorithm as suffix trees without using complicated ways to represent the tree efficiently. So these are really the modern version of suffix trees. Unfortunately, not as widely spread in, in uh, textbooks yet, but I think this is just because the suffix arrays and all these algorithms, they're all from this millennium, they're all past 2000. This is fairly recent stuff given, given that this is such a, a fundamental problem. It just took people uh, time to, to figure out these connections. So in, in their raw form, it can be a bit harder to reason about these enhanced suffix arrays as opposed to the trees. But the way that people use these is you think of an algorithm to solve a problem on suffix trees, and then you find a way to simulate what you need in the tree based on the arrays. And uh, usually that works out fine. I haven't seen an example where it didn't eventually where someone didn't even, well, not eventually someone invented a way to implement it based on, on the arrays. It uses much less, less space. Both are linear. Uh, so this is an example where the theta notation um, is, not, is a bit um, misleading. Both have theta of n space in theory, but the constant factors uh, do matter here. And uh, you've actually seen a linear time construction for this.